Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Now you might be wondering why I'm holding up two watches that don't appear to be working. Well, that's partly because they're the best part of 30 years old and these were the first two watches I used to use to record my heart rate. Now the very oldest one here is a Polar Sports Tester. I first used that about 1993. And this one here is a Polar Vantage NV, which I got in 1996. But what was interesting in these days, both these watches used to record heart rate a lot, lot better than say optical heart rate does now. So you could argue that we haven't come an awful long way in the best part of 30 years. But I didn't actually want to talk about my uh, watches that don't currently work. I have to try and get a battery for them and see if I can resurrect them at some point. What I want to talk about today is the max heart rate formula, which is often quoted as 220 minus your age. Now, because I've got data stemming back from 1993, I thought it'd be interesting to work out what was my max heart rate each year, i.e. for each age, and see how well that does correspond to 220 minus age. Now, first of all, a quick history lesson on what was the origins of the formula 220 minus age. So I find a paper here by Robergs and Lanweir in 2002, which talks about the history of the formula. Now, it turns out that the 220 minus age formula was never actually derived by any science. It was actually a paper by Fox and et al., reference there number one, which is 1971, that they looked at all the different formulas and they came up with their own formula of 220 minus age that best fitted all the data that they could see. So that was basically the origin of it. When you might ask, why is maximum heart rate so important? Well, I just want to say a Garmin watch, it defaults to 220 minus age. And that is the basis by which all your sort of VO2 max calculations, all those race predictions, things that are calculated. So I found if you get that wrong, then you're unsurprisingly those calculations are going to be off as well and it's also if you're into heart rate training it's essential to know what your max heart rate is so you can base all your zones on it now unfortunately for a lot of people 220 minus age seems to be wrong having said that i also thought it's worked reasonably well for me so as i said i've dived into all my historical data and let's have a look at how that looks year on year so this graph here is plotting my maximum heart rate in each of the years from 1993 when I had my first data all the way to 2020. Now my date of birth is 22.11.66. So basically in 1993, I was age 26 for the best part of it. And then I'm now I've just turned 54, whereas the best part of last year I was 53. So the blue line here is my actual observed max heart rates in various activities, mainly running, but there are a few in more recent years that are cycling, which I'll show in a minute. And this orange line here is what 220 minus age will actually be. And you can actually see that my graph actually follows quite a similar pattern to the graph. I mean, one thing is definitely interesting to note that as I've got older, my max heart rate has gone down generally. And there are a few times where literally I was almost right on the line. My highest ever observed max heart rate was 193. That was in a 5,000 meter race in 1994. I think I did 16.12 for that, which is somewhat quicker than I can manage at the moment. Whereas last year I got it up to 164, which is actually the highest it had been for a few years. So it doesn't obviously follow a linear pattern down, but you see there's definite trend towards that. And this data is generally all good heart rate strap data I've taken out any readings which I thought were obviously wrong. And for the sake of completeness, this is all the activities that I did. So if you want to look up some of these ones, I've got Strava back to 2006. My first Strava was about 2004, but I don't think I had any heart rate data that year because the Garmin 201 didn't have a heart rate monitor and the 301 was a bit of a dodgy strap. So I don't think that data is overly reliable. As I said there, my highest ever heart rate was 193 in 1994 at the end of a track 5000. And then I had a properly measured one. I went to Lillishaw to have a VO2 max test in October 1995 and another one next April. And they got me up to 190 max heart rate there on the treadmill. And then when I went back and just leave six months later, my VO2 max had gone up from 64.2 to 70.5. But my max heart rate had gone down. That's another factor I've often seen that when I'm fitter, I can't get my max heart rate up as much. And I think that's all to do with having more stroke volume. I don't really understand all the science, but it seems that the fitter I am, the harder it is to get my max heart rate up. So if you look, for instance, in 2020, my highest heart rate running was only 157, doing some segment intervals in April, whereas my actual highest heart rate for the year was actually on the bike, 164 in a Zwift race. That was when I was recovering from my calf tear and spending more time on the bike. But on Zwift indoors, 
unfit it's a lot easier to get your heart rate up than it is say outdoors running because <laughs> apart from the else i have to worry about my aging legs and so interestingly for all these years up until 2013 i'd always set my maximum heart rate running and i've done a few sort of into the 180s doing time trials in the mid 90s and then didn't really do much cycling for quite a few years but in more recent years if anything i'd say that i was i'm finding almost as easy to get my heart rate up doing cycling as we're running. So what's your max heart rate these days? And have you been able to graph it over the years? How much data have you got? I'm interested to know if you could plot a similar sort of graph to me with your training data and see if you're seeing a similar trend. Is it going down with age? That's probably the most important thing. I think the key message for me, if you are into heart rate training, is that make sure that you keep an eye on what your max heart rate is. And it's often the best way to do it is end of a race or do some hill reps or, as I said, <laughs> plenty of Zwift sessions as well and see what you get. So I hope you found this interesting and I look forward to seeing the next one then. Bye.